Goth is an entire subculture which inspired not only decades of music, but fashion and films. In fact, the unique look associated with goth culture is as much a part of the brand as its melancholy music. Where country has its belt buckles and boots, goth has its trip pants and chains. But we want to know what came first. Was it the moody fashion or was it the music? So we're not talking about the hot topic mall goths. This was something that came straight out of the late 70s post-punk scene. It was the dark, moody, black lipstick wearing specter known as goth rock. Goth's influence can be seen everywhere, from Tim Burton movies to Billie Eilish. There's even an annual goth cruise. Today, LA and I are going to embrace our inner goths, put on the black mascara and lipstick, and create an appropriately moody song. But first, we're going to talk about where this subculture really started. So aside from the silver jewelry and black jeans, what exactly is goth? Firstly, we need to get into the vibe by reading Edgar Allan Poe. Why? Right, let's look it up now. No doubt, I now grew very pale, but I talked more fluently and with a heightened voice. Villains, I shrieked. Dissemble no more, I admit the deed. Tear up the planks, here, here, is the beating of this hideous heart. Oh my goodness. That's dark. While the term Gothic originally came about to describe European architecture of the Middle Ages, from roughly the 12th century through the 16th, the term was later used to describe romantic and spooky literature from the 1700s and 1800s. So what does that have to do with a moody musical style? Most give credit to music critic John Stickney for connecting the term with the music. After meeting Jim Morrison of The Doors in a gloomy wine cellar in 1967, he wrote that it was the perfect room to honor the gothic rock of The Doors, referencing the somber lyrics and dark musical stylings of the band. This is the end. But by the late 70s and early 80s, goth rock was a genre. Where did goth rock come from? It's considered to be an offshoot of the late 70s British punk rock scene called post-punk. Post-punk took the energy and the do-it-yourself spirit of punk in bold, experimental new directions. Blending punk with influences from other genres like disco, funk, and electronic music. While punk was considered an angry rebel yell at the establishment, goth became the opposite, a fatalistic, romantic resignation to the inevitable. During this time, three bands really came to the forefront of the emerging genre to become the pioneers of the goth rock movement. Joy Division, Susie and the Banshees, and Bauhaus. So what made these goth bands so gothic? Goth music is often identified by its dark themes and is considered nihilistic and poetic. A recurring heavy bass, a moody synthesizer, and the use of echo doesn't hurt either. Perhaps what can be considered as the archetype for all goth music was Bauhaus' single, Bella Lugosi's Dead, which came out in 1979 as considered by many to be the first truly gothic rock song. Bella Lugosi's dead, the birds have left the bell tower. Bella Lugosi was an actor who played the title character in Universal's 1931 film, Dracula, and whose real life was almost as tragic as his fictional one. The band's bassist, David J, said he came up with the idea for the song and wrote it after binge-watching vampire movies on television. The band's frontman, Peter Murphy, said the sound of the song was in part also inspired by dub reggae. You can hear the influence. Listen to the revolutionary's Reaction and Dub from 1978. And here's Bella Lugosi's Dead. Bauhaus's song may be considered goth's first anthem, but it was just the beginning for the musical genre. The English band, Susie and the Banshees, formed in 1976, taking their name from the horror movie, Cry of the Banshee, which starred another classic of horror, Vincent Price. Some argue Susie and the Banshees was originally a punk band that transitioned to post-punk goth with their fourth album, Juju, in 1981. But there's no debate that lead singer Susie Sue heavily influenced goth fashion, but more on that later. Other bands such as Joy Division, The Sisters of Mercy, The Cure, The Damned, Dead Can Dance, Type O Negative, and many more, put on their capes and came out of the shadows with their dark messages of loneliness and rebellion. So what exactly are we getting ourselves into? <laughs> Listen, when I thought about goth uh, initially, I thought it was gonna be super similar to the metal thing. I'm like, okay, it's gonna be a lot of work. Okay, gotta dig in. But then hearing actually like goth rock music, it puts me in an era, early 80s. It sounds exactly like that, where the, the synths were like long, like. I don't know if this is a thing throughout, but a lot of open intervals. Even if we're not dealing with an unstable harmony, like an augmented chord, but still just 
something about this open sound, it, it feels like it doesn't really need to resolve anywhere or go anywhere, but it also doesn't feel like it's settled. If you had to resolve that, kind of, if you had to resolve that, where would you go? <laughs> you don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> okay, so we know where the music started. Can we assume that the fashion and style began about the same time? It may have begun much earlier. Goth was directly inspired by the romanticism of both the Romantic and Victorian era, drawing some of its earliest inspirations from Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the writings of Edgar Allan Poe, and Bram Stoker. But oddly enough, the beginnings of the Goth style may have actually had its roots in the Victorian tuberculosis epidemic. The gaunt and pale look of those affected by the fatal disease was often romanticized, influencing the mid-1800s perceptions of beauty, which were later adopted by the emerging goth culture. Horror cinema also inspired gothic style. Silent film star Theda Berra was nicknamed the Vamp, and French actress Sarah Bernhardt was known for sleeping in a coffin. Later, there was pinup model Betty Page, vampire actress Myla Nermi, and of course, TV's Elvira. Goth was further cemented in popular culture in 1976 with Anne Rice's Interview with a Vampire, a novel believed to have also heavily influenced the genre. But now, back to Susie Sue, the godmother of goth. Her raven hair and signature eye makeup was more influenced by ancient Egyptians than the Victorians. But once the style was out the gate, it took on an afterlife of its own. The goth culture as we know it today further developed in 1982 with the opening of the London goth club, The Bat Cave. The club inspired the spooky scene with regular performances from Bauhaus, Susie and the Banshees, as well as many others. Soon goth spread across the globe, infecting many with its dark music and fashion. Are you ready to embrace your inner goth? Let's get it. I'm with it. Like this? I got a base at the crib, and so I could definitely <laughs> lay down. Nice. Yes. I'm all for LA playing bass guitar. Tempo-wise, even if we have like going up top, we could have like boom, boom, ka. Yes. Boom, boom, ka. It's still driving, it's still marching, but it's like you're walking, you're not walking down a sunny street, you're walking in the woods. It kind of has to just sound like we're getting in a, a dark crevice in our head. In the mind. Okay. I want to add some textures. There has to be that fuzz. They twisted it up some way, somehow. There's a lot of sound design with them synths. Okay. I think we have a plan. Want to know more about Creatures of the Night? We'll head over to Monstrum, a PBS show all about monsters, myths, and folklore, hosted by our friend Dr. Z, an expert of all things Gothic.